Today, I'm going to talk about how to write a literature review. My name is Dr. Nadine Spring, and I'm so excited to guide you through this comprehensive guide. In this session, we'll cover the essential steps and strategies for crafting an effective literature review, which is going to be a huge component of academic research. Let's go ahead and get started. So we'll outline what we'll be covering in today's presentation. First, I'll define what a literature review is and why it's so important in academic research. Then I'll discuss its purpose and importance, highlighting how it contributes to your overall research project. Next, I'll break down the key components of a literature review so you know exactly what to include in your work. And finally, we'll walk through the steps involved in writing a literature review, providing you with a clear roadmap to guide your writing process. Let's start by diving into each of these aspects to help you build a strong foundation for your literature review. So what exactly is a literature review? A literature review is basically a summary of existing research on a specific topic. The primary goal is to evaluate and synthesize the findings from relevant studies, providing a comprehensive overview of what has already been discovered in your area of interest. In this literature review, you will have to identify any trends, any gaps, and ongoing debates within the existing literature. This helps to position your own research within the broader academic context. And ultimately, a well-crafted literature review provides valuable context for your research by highlighting how your study contributes to or expands upon the existing body of knowledge. The purpose of a literature review is multifaceted. First, it's going to demonstrate your understanding of the research topic by showing that you have engaged deeply with the existing literature. A well-conducted literature review also highlights how your research fits into the broader academic conversation. It shows where your study aligns with or deviates from previous work. It helps to identify gaps in the current research, which can lead to the formulation of meaningful research questions. This process is so important for guiding the direction of your own research and ensuring that it contributes to new insights in the field. By situating your research within the existing body of knowledge, a literature review not only contextualizes your work, but also strengthens its relevance and impact. So now we'll talk about some of the key components that make up a literature review. You wanna have an introduction. This section sets the stage for your review by providing background information and defining the scope of your review. It should outline the research topic and the objectives of the literature review. You'll want to organize the studies either thematically by grouping research findings into specific themes or chronologically by following a timeline of developments in the field. This helps in presenting the information in a coherent and logical manner. You also want to have some critical analysis. And in this section, you will evaluate the strengths and the weaknesses of the studies you review, discuss their contributions to the field, and assess their methodologies, findings, and their relevance. You will integrate the findings from the various studies to provide a comprehensive overview. This means combining insights to highlight any trends, debates, and gaps in the literature. You'll also have a conclusion, and this is where you summarize the key findings from your review and discuss their implications. Highlight how your own research will address the identified gaps or build upon existing knowledge. These components together will help you create a thorough and well organized literature review. Now I'll walk you through the steps to writing a literature review. One, define your research question. Start by clarifying the focus of your review. 
A well-defined research question will guide your literature search and ensure that your literature review remains relevant to your research objectives. Two, conduct a comprehensive literature search. You want to use academic databases and journals to gather relevant literature. This involves searching for articles, books, and other sources that address your research question. Three, evaluate and select relevant sources. Assess the credibility and relevance of the sources you find. Look for high quality, peer reviewed studies that contribute meaningfully to your topic. Four, organize the literature. Group the sources into categories or themes. This helps to structure your review logically, whether you're organizing by thematic areas or chronological developments. Five, write the review. Synthesize the information from your sources. Provide a critical analysis of the studies. Ensure that your review is structured clearly with a focus on integrating and evaluating the literature. Six, revise and edit. Revise and edit your review to ensure clarity and coherence. Check that it adheres to academic guidelines and addresses your research question effectively. And if you follow these steps, it will help you create a thorough and well-organized literature review. Defining a clear and focused research question is the first step in writing a literature review. And here is how to approach this. Your question should be precise and address a specific aspect of your topic. This focus will guide your literature search and review process. Make sure that your research question is narrow enough to be manageable, but yet broad enough to allow for a comprehensive review. It should be something that can be answered through existing research. Your literature review should directly address this research question. All the studies and findings you include should be relevant to answering and exploring your question. And by carefully defining your research question, you will set a solid foundation for your literature review and ensure that your review is purposeful and relevant. So conducting a thorough literature search is important for gathering relevant information. And here's how to approach it. Start with reputable academic databases such as PubMed or Google Scholar and any others that are relevant to your specific field. These platforms provide access to a wide range of scholarly articles and research studies. Develop a list of key terms and keywords related to your search questions. Use these terms to perform more effective searches and narrow down relevant studies. Read through the abstracts of the articles you find to determine their relevance. Select studies that closely align with your research question and objectives. As you gather sources, keep detailed records of all of the references. This will help you to accurately cite your sources and manage your bibliography or reference pages. And by following these steps, you can ensure that your literature search is comprehensive and relevant to your review. Evaluating and selecting the right sources is another important step in writing a literature review. And here's how you can choose high quality and relevant studies. Evaluate the credibility of each source by considering the author's qualifications, the publication's reputation, and the study's peer review status. Ensure that the sources are relevant to your research question and contribute meaningfully to your review. Look at the publication date to ensure that the research is current and relevant. Assess the methodology used in the studies to determine their rigor and their reliability. Select studies that offer valuable insights and have robust findings. These studies should directly address your research question and add depth to your literature review. And by carefully evaluating and selecting your sources, you ensure that your literature review is built on a solid foundation of credible and relevant research.
once you have gathered and evaluated your sources, the next step is to organize them effectively. And here is one way to approach this. Decide whether to organize your sources thematically, which means by grouping studies around common themes, or chronologically, which means by arranging them in order of their publication dates. This will depend on what best suits your research question and the structure of your literature review. Develop an outline that reflects the major themes or trends identified in the literature. This outline will serve as the framework for your literature review, helping you to structure your writing logically. Visual tools such as concept maps or tables can help you see connections between different studies and themes. These tools make it easier to organize and integrate the literature in a coherent manner. Effective organization will make your literature review more readable and ensure that your findings are presented in a clear and logical way. Now we get to writing the review, and this involves several key sections that together create a coherent and comprehensive document. And here's how to approach each part. For the introduction, you wanna begin by defining the scope and objectives of your review. This section should outline what your review will cover and the context for the literature that will be discussed. In the body of your review, you want to summarize and synthesize the findings from your sources. Organize this section according to the themes or in chronological order, which, whichever you established earlier. This is where you present the key research and show how it fits together. You want to offer a critical analysis of the literature, discuss the strengths and weaknesses of the studies you reviewed, as well as identify any gaps or limitations in the research. This analysis helps to contextualize your findings and highlight the value of your review. Conclude by summarizing the key insights from your literature review, discuss the implications of these findings for your own research and in your specific field. And this section should tie everything together and provide a clear sense of the overall contributions of the reviewed literature. And by carefully constructing each of these sections, you'll end up with creating a very thorough and insightful literature review. Once you have completed your initial draft, the revising and editing stage is a step you really should not miss, okay? And this is so important for refining your literature review. Here are some things to focus on. You wanna check for clarity and coherence. Ensure that your review is clear and well-organized. Check that each section flows logically and that your arguments are presented in a coherent manner. Verify that all sources are accurately cited according to the required citation style. Make sure that every reference used in your review is properly documented in your bibliography or reference list. There's so many times I see students use citing work in their in-text citations, but it's not listed in their reference list list or vice versa. Proofread your review to correct any grammatical or typos, and this is going to help to enhance the professionalism and re readability of your work. Seek feedback from your peers or any advisors who can provide valuable insights and suggestions for improvement, and their perspectives can help you identify areas that may need further clarification or revision. Remember to revise and edit your literature review, as this will help to ensure that it meets the high standards of quality and accuracy. As you work on your literature review, be mindful of some common mistakes to ensure that your review is effective and of high quality. One common pitfall I see students making is including too much detail about each study. Instead of summarizing every study exhaustively, focus on the key findings and how they contribute to your research question. This keeps your, re your review concise and relevant. Avoid merely just summarizing the studies you review. 
it's important to go beyond summary and provide a critical analysis. Discuss the strengths, the weaknesses, and contributions of each study to provide a deeper understanding of the literature. Ensure that your literature review has a clear structure and logical flow. A well-organized review makes it easier for readers to follow your arguments and understand how the literature fits together. Make sure to include recent studies to maintain the relevance of your review. Outdated research can diminish the impact of your review, so it's important to incorporate the latest findings in your field. And by avoiding some common mistakes, you'll move on to create a more focused, insightful, and well-organized literature review. To further assist you in writing your literature review, here are some resources. There are several comprehensive books and articles available that offer in-depth guidance on writing literature reviews. These resources can provide detailed insights and examples to help you with your review. Websites such as Purdue OWL offer extensive online guides and tutorials on literature reviews and academic writing. These can be excellent resources for understanding formatting, structure, and for best practices. Use online academic databases and university libraries to access a wide range of scholarly articles and research papers. These platforms provide access to up-to-date research and can help you find relevant literature for your review. These resources will help you gain a deeper understanding of how to craft a thorough and effective literature review. So to wrap up, let's recap the main points that I've covered today. I discussed what a literature review is and its importance, including how it fits into your research. I went through the key components and steps involved in writing a literature review, from defining your research question to revising and editing your work. I also highlighted common mistakes to avoid and provided additional resources to support your efforts. I encourage you to apply these guidelines as you work on your own literature reviews. Remember, writing a thorough literature review takes practice and attention to detail. If you have any further questions or need any additional support, feel free to reach out and you can con contact me directly at nadine at springwell360.com. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more resources and tips on public health, health equity, clinical trials, academic writing, and research. Thank you for joining today's session, and I'm really looking forward to seeing you again in the future. These are my references. And once again, remember to subscribe.